Hello, my name is Hugh, and welcome to the first video of the series Cisco UCCE 12.x Build Your Own Lab. In these videos, I plan to show you how to build your own lab from ground up. On this first slide, I'm going to quickly go over the contents of this video and what I'm going to cover. First, we'll look at an example lab design that I'm going to build in this video series. I'll then cover the suggested hardware that you can use to build this lab with. Then we'll cover what's needed for your administration PC so you can work and configure all the equipment necessary. Then finally, I'll cover the cable connections for the lab equipment. On the next video, we'll start to configure the equipment. This next slide shows a basic network diagram of the equipment and how it's connected. In the table in the bottom of the screen, it shows what equipment is used and the virtual machines that will be created to deploy the software on. I'm going to go through in detail how each machine is installed and configured in each video. So by the end of the video series, you should have a fully functional UCC environment. At the top of the screen on the left hand side is the ISP router. This is where your internet connection comes into your location. We're going to be connecting this to the Cisco switch so that the internet is accessible from the lab equipment. This is needed so the OS updates and any other software may carry out their updates. The Cisco switch will be used to connect all the lab equipment together and allow communications between the various devices. The Cisco 2921 router will be used as a lab router and voice gateway and will allow the virtual machines to communicate with each other from the various VLANs configured in the network. You don't necessarily have to create VLANs in order to make your lab, however it simulates what a potential production environment looks like. The Cisco UCS220 server with VMware installed is where we'll be installing all the virtual machines. It basically allows us to be able to put several virtual machines onto a single physical server where it can utilize the resources better. Finally, we have the Cisco IP phones. This is what we'll be using to test the communications within the lab environment. These will simulate agent phones. Next, I'm going to talk a little about the suggested equipment for the lab. You don't necessarily have to buy these However, I know the configurations work with these devices and currently they're pretty cheap to obtain. First, we have the Cisco 2921 router. This is a modular router, which means that you can buy expansion modules to add more interfaces or to add functionality to the router. The usual model comes with 512 megabytes of RAM and 256 megabytes of flash memory. It has three built-in gigabit ethernet ports, one service module slot, and four EHWIC module slots. At this time, they're selling on eBay for approximately $60 to $100. Next, we have the Cisco 3750X PoE switch. There are various models available, from 12 port to 48 port. I would make sure that you get the 3750X and not one of the other 3750 models. The X model is newer and has a little bit more flexibility and functionality. I would also recommend you get the PoE model. This will ensure that the IP phones will not need a separate power supply. If you get the PoE, then you only need the network cable connected to the phones as the switch will supply the power that the phone needs to work. If you don't get the PoE model, then you'll need to buy a separate PoE injector for each phone. For the 3750X, it usually comes with 256 megabytes of RAM and 64 megabytes of flash memory. Now we're going to cover the Cisco C220 server. There are various models available, but I think the most important part is to try to get a machine that has 128 gigabytes of RAM and a couple of high core CPUs, from 6 cores to 10 cores. This will give you the best flexibility. The next thing is drive size. They have two models. They have a large form factor version that takes four 3.5 inch drives 
and another model that takes eight two and a half inch drives called the small form factor. It really doesn't matter which you get, but it will affect the cost of the drives you need to get. The 2.5 inch drives are about twice the cost of the 3.5 inch drives, so it really depends on your budget. There are also multiple revisions of the hardware as well. They are called M3, M4 and M5. The latest being the M5, which will also be the more expensive model. When it comes to drive capacity, I would suggest getting either 3 or 4 drives with 4 terabytes of storage. The next important thing for the server is a RAID controller. This is important so that if one of the drives goes bad, the system will still operate and you won't lose your information. When you purchase a system, it may or may not come with a RAID controller. If it doesn't, then there are two RAID controllers that I suggest getting that I know are compatible with these servers. It doesn't matter which one you get, since they both have the same functionality. The only real difference is the way that they are configured. In order to configure the server initially, you'll need to get a Cisco KVM adapter. These servers don't come with the normal KVM ports. They have a special connector that you need to get a special cable for. Luckily, these are easily available and pretty cheap from eBay, costing around $20. For the initial switch and router configurations, you'll need a console cable. The one I suggest here works well with Windows 10 and 11. Some of the older console cables are incompatible with Windows 11, so your best bet is to buy one or two of these. They're available from Amazon for about $10. The last thing you'll need is a set of RJ45 network cables. You'll need about 10 of these for the lab setup. You may want to buy a few more, maybe a couple of long ones so you can easily connect your administration PC with the switch. Again, these are easily available from Amazon. On this next page, I've put together a quick summary of all the equipment, where you can get it and approximate costs. So for a lab that uses 3.5 inch discs, you're looking at approximate cost of about $800. And for 2.5 inch discs, you're looking at around $1,000. Now to talk a little about the administration PC. You're going to want to have a PC that you can connect to the switch, so you can configure all of the systems and do some testing with. There will be some software that is recommended and needed to carry out various tasks during the configuration steps. First we have PuTTY, which is used for SSH and console access to the switch and router. Next we have TFTPD, which is a TFTP server. This will be used to upload and upgrade the firmware on the router and switch. We then have the Cisco USB console driver, which is needed to be able to use the USB console cable with the router and switch. Next we have the portable version of Firefox with Flash. Since all the browsers have now removed Flash from them, we need to use this special version that still has Flash in it. We need this because the remote access controller of the server still needs Flash for the web interface in order to do some testing management of the base server. Next we have VMware Remote Console. This is used for console sessions with the virtual machines. It enables you to see and control the virtual machines from the boot stage onwards. This will be used to help us install the operating systems and also some of the Cisco software. The next thing is VMware Player. This is optional, but if you decide to install it, then you can create virtual machines on your local machine and use those for doing some testing with. Finally, we have Java JRE 1.7. This is also needed for connecting to the KVM of the Cisco Remote Access Controller. Newer versions don't work as they require too high of a security setting. On this last page I have a summary of how the cables get connected between the equipment. This can be done either before or after the initial configurations of the switch, router and server. Thanks for watching this initial video. In the next video I'll be doing the initial configuration of the Cisco 2921 router. Please like this video and subscribe to get updates. Thank you.